right, everyone, welcome back to the world of cinematics. We're a uh, we're short one man here, but uh, Aaron is uh, off in an undisclosed location on a special assignment. So uh, for the, the meantime, it's just going to be us three and Robert in his, uh, his own little corner of uh, fairy tale land over there. We have a, a fun topic today. You know, the last few weeks have been a little more on the serious side. We decided we wanted to go a little crazy. And so before we go crazy with our main topic, we're going to go crazy with our our, uh, our first primary off the bat topic of, uh, well, something crazy this way comes apparently. You guys, we watched the second episode of Moon Knight this week. What did we think of it? We liked it. <laughs> I was going to say, wow. not everyone talked at once. Enthusiastic response, Brendan. Tell me more. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, the part where the, it starts... It's just amazing. And then it ends and there's there's words at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, actually, you know, serious. I enjoy this show a lot more than I thought I would. We talked about it last week, so I won't go into that too much. But um, I like that our hero and our hero is like a leader. The moon god is kind of a jerk. Mm. Kind of, He's really manipulative, um, just the way he's playing the game and stuff. Mm. So I like that it's not just all clear black and white. I also like that the villain is, uh, you know, they got an interesting thing going. Like, should somebody be judged for something, they will do. Right. You know, it's kind of uh, what Civil War II was based after. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to see uh, that all go down, even though I think it's been done better than Civil War Two. So yeah. that's good. For those of you who don't know, Civil War Two, the Marvel comic storyline, not an upcoming historical event. Yeah, yeah not that we know <laughs> of. Or an upcoming Civil War right. Two as in part please, two. Please don't. No, but, it's uh, more. It's it's kind of like that uh, Tom Cruise movie. What's that one? Minority, Minority Report. Report. Minority yeah. Report. If you've seen that, it's kind of like that where they can tell somebody's going to do something bad in the future. And you know they they took it to the extreme to kind of simplify it. You know, it's not just the idea of you know someone's going to do something bad, so we'll catch them and punish them before it. It's, you know, this child is probably going to do something bad someday, so we'll kill him. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. and so, you know, it, they, they weren't exactly subtle about it when they're having this philosophical discussion and it ends with Oscar Isaac saying, wait, we're talking about killing children, right? He's like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it... You know, even though it wasn't exactly subtle, I did still really appreciate that because that's a lot more than most superhero movies or shows where it's just, I am bad guy, hear me roar, and I will yeah. stop you, bad they guy. They were actually bad, and you could see people that actually agree with that. Right. I Like, I saw lots of people online saying, okay, the uh, the children, the killing children part, maybe that's a bit much, but uh, other than that, I totally joined this cult. I mean, you know, they're, they're bettering themselves, like teaching each other languages. Everyone's hot, so I mean, I guess I've become <laughs> hot too. <laughs> You know, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, like it's, it's to the point where you're like, this is totally evil. And while I would never join, I see why other people are finding this appealing. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, there was lentil soup. The thing yes. that, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, maybe not. So for me, the thing that I like about the moon god is he reminds me of, uh, and it, uh, the film Patton. George Patton is this general who's very hardened, and he'll, it, you know, if you're going, th if you're at the hospital wing, for example, and you're suffering PTSD and you're not physically wounded, in the film he slaps around this kid because he's like, you know, you coward, and he just gets upset and after him. He reminds me of Patton in that way because he's willing to to push people and to do things that your conventional wise leaders want to do but he's also a force to be reckoned with you know this moon god he says i serve true justice those guys don't and i don't think that anyone disagrees with what with uh, his mission but they disagree with the way he goes about his mission blackmailing people and manipulating them to do basically his will though technically he can't force them to he can give them the power and he can also give it to another you know, curse their lives as well. So that's something I thought was interesting uh, with the moon god. Is like Brendan said, he's not speaking to them. You know, I usually when I, I watch a superhero movie or the, or a show or whatever, I'm I'm sitting there like I want to I want to see the theme. I want to see like what's the the underlying you know uh, motivations here. I care about the characters and stuff. And 
Moon Knight is delivering that in space. Can I hold on and talk about the, uh, that ending fight scene for a second? Huh. Where, uh, I mean, oh my gosh, he uh, grabs the jackal demon and impales him on a giant spike. One of the most gothic images I've seen in a long time is he's framed against the moon and he catches his moon blade out of the air yeah. and he's bleeding and turning to dust all at once. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. <laughs> like, forget the uh, underlying theme and all that. That was so freaking cool. Mm. Yes, yeah. it was... It... It was just cool to see somebody uh, at that level, the street level, fighting monsters. So I personally prefer them to fight just criminals. He's at a different level than, say, Daredevil, for instance. So just watching him plan ahead, think about how he's going to do it, and then pulls it off and does it, you know. Mm. Shish kebab. Yeah. Just, that's the word we look for. Shish kebab. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, the, throughout the whole episode, it's a TV series, so there's going to be a lot of filler um, stuff. It wasn't that much filler, but there was just points where it's like, okay, just give him the suit, you know. We get it. You think he's a dodgy person, but you're not doing too good with your suit yourself. But I did think it was really funny. Him, he's like, suit up, and then he, he gets in the, <laughs> the nice white suit. <laughs> Yeah, like he's gonna go to church. Yeah, the Mister Knight suit is called in the comments. Oh, okay. Wonder, yeah. Yeah, I wonder how they're gonna put that in there because you see it advertised a lot. Mm -hmm. It's in the comments. It's like, how are they gonna have this suit suit? So, but they pulled it off. Now it's like, okay. I agree. Yeah. One of my favorite things in this episode is it showed you know, one of the differences between you know Mark and Stephen. Obviously, is, you know Mark is the uh, the traditional superhero is like. I'm cool. I can do anything. I'm going to go and do this. And Mark or Steven is very, you know, he's not a coward, but he's, it would be generous to say he's meek, but I would not call him weak Yeah. because when he realizes, oh, I have this split personality inside my head and he's doing dangerous things and other people are getting hurt. His first reaction is, I'm going to go turn myself into the authorities. I don't care if I never see the outside world again. I don't care if I get pumped up full of drugs and can never think straight again. It will be worth it to make sure that you don't ever hurt anyone again. Yeah. Or he, that's why he's always refusing to give over control to this guy because I know if, you, if I do that, someone is going to get hurt. Maybe it's someone who deserves it, maybe it's not, but I, I, don't, I would rather take the punishment myself. He only switches over control when he sees that other people are in danger and Mark is the only one who could stop it. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, it's just kind of slow though sometimes. Right. Just like, just let's get to the action. Yeah, I it, see it was dragged out a little too much. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's actually a good point though. And I do like the, uh, you know, as much as some things were dragged out, there was a bit of economical storytelling where if it was a lesser storyteller, when, when Steven gets his own Moon Knight suit, they'd be like, wow, I feel so much more powerful. I, I feel alive, the energy. This is what you're like all the time. They didn't do that. They just had him like accidentally, you know, break a car and just this reaction of, oh, and so, you know, all of a sudden we realize, oh, he has these powers. He's not used to this. He's surprised, kind of likes it. We're moving on. Yeah. Something that comes to mind as we're talking about Steven specifically, since he's kind of the, our main character and we're slowly getting introduced to Mark and possibly others, is uh, there's a great uh, review by Heck Fraud Media of The Last Jedi, and he talks about how they introduce a character and making them likable, the quick and dirty way, as he puts it. And, and he gives the example of Marty McFly. It's like, okay, what do you do? You make him funny. You make him a, a recipient of an undeserved misfortune. And you, you know, have, they have to have a moral code. And Stephen has all those things in spades. He, he, he's funny because he's kind of awkward and weird and quirky and talks to that statue guy. Uh, he's a, somebody who's received an undeserved misfortune. He's, he's got the multiple personality things going and he, and you know, he has no idea where he's been or where he's going and all those things. He doesn't deserve that. But he also has a moral code. There's, and Jed points that out. He's not weak. He has bravery. Uh, imagine sitting there in a cult. You're sitting there in the middle of a cult, eating dinner with the cult leader, and he's like, "Oh yeah, killing kids. If it's what we've got to do." And he's like, "Oh no, I, I don't want to kill kids." And you can see the people just standing up and like they're they're about to get aggressive. And he's just like, oh, "No, no. Hey, who here? You're all okay with that? You're all okay with killing kids?" 
So he does stand up for himself. He does stand up for us, right? He may not be super successful in life, but that's not, I would argue that's not necessarily his fault alone. You know, it's uh, his burden to carry the multiple personalities for whatever reason. And so that they've utilized that, that Marty McFly, the quick and dirty way to endure your character to the audience. So those, just those three things, just make him funny, make him have a moral code, and also undeserved misfortune. The world craps on you. It's a, it's a great way to say, man, that sucks. I'm rooting for you, kid. Yeah. Make him the underdog. Harry Potter, uh, Luke Skywalker, they do those things over and over again. It's the easiest way to endure. Right. Characters. Well, we, we've kind of been monopolizing this, Robert. What have you thought of this second episode? Uh, I mean, I said last time how I was actually intrigued about this show, and the second episode just kind of built on that. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to the next episode coming up. Uh, I I did really appreciate the fight or the when he switched over to Mark and the whole stabbing thing you were talking about, Jed. But I got to hand it to. Uh, Steven with a V. <laughs> well, I, got, well, I gotta hand it to him uh, for still refusing to give it over, saying, I, I will do this myself, because in his mind, he's like, I will make sure no one gets hurt. But what he doesn't realize is, Mark is a professional. He he can do this without getting people involved. But it's just kind of his whole thing. So I'm kind of I'm kind of excited to see what happens. I don't know much. I was trying to read up on the Egyptian mythology just because I was super curious. Right. That's and, a big mess to get uh, involved in. Good luck. Yeah, I, I read the first one. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, raw. I'm done. <laughs> it, it gets complicated when uh, Horus is the uh, the brother and you know the brother of Isis and Osiris, and then he also becomes their son. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to just stick with the mythology or Egyptian mythology that I know from Stargate and call it good. <laughs> it's like, I'll stick with the Greek gods. They were so complex. They were incestuous, but I could at least follow everything that was going on. It's like, okay, I read you. <laughs> tell me where the bull man came from again. <laughs> no, wait, never mind. Don't tell me. Don't, don't tell me. Zeus, no. I'm looking at you. Well, <laughs> Can't keep that. Right. Never mind. I'm not saying that live on television. That's right. We have filters here on this channel. <laughs> All right. Does anyone else have any thoughts they want to add to our uh, discussion of Moon Knight episode two? No. Stephanie, you gonna dress up like Moon Knight for Halloween in the suit? Uh, you know, if if somebody provided the suit, I would. Otherwise, it's no. Cool suit. I'll Maybe tell you Mr. what. I, I'll do Mr. Knight, and then you do Deadpool. Huh. <laughs> 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 because there's a, simi a similarity. You could do a uh, Mr. Deadpool Knight and then the, uh, what is it, like the anti Deadpool suit where it's, you know, the white and black one with the red eyes? Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Did I say Deadpool? I meant, <laughs> dang it. I meant to say Daredevil. Yeah. Uh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, because so, Stefan already has the costume, but Deadpool would be hilarious too, just saying. <laughs> so why are you hurt Deadpool? <laughs> He's driving us crazy. It's the theme of the episode. We're going crazy. I, I like how you guys managed to justify me accidentally saying Deadpool instead of Daredevil. <laughs> hey, we, we work hard to cover each other's butts. <laughs> I don't. Make it look yeah, nice. Brendan, <laughs> Brendan likes to just point and laugh. Talk about Deadpool. Where's <laughs> Deadpool come from? <laughs> well, to be fair, our, our, other, our former roommate, when we were watching the episode, he's like, that guy looks like Deadpool a little bit. Just because of the mask, yeah. the Mr. Knight suit. So that's what I thought you were going for, Robert. Mm -hmm. but, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Red, white, close enough. Yep. Yep. All right. So with the with that out of the way, let's uh let's move on to our our main topic today. I don't know about you guys. Actually, I do know about you guys, but uh, I'm going to pretend as if I don't. I love the Muppets. The Muppets are wonderful. They have this incredible talent to take the most serious topics and subjects and make it funny, and to take the most serious or the most funny and ridiculous things and take it seriously. It has this magic and this charm that's never been replicated. And I'm going to be honest, they've been really directionless the last like decade. You know, they yeah. 2011 great movie with the Muppets movie. Then there was a sequel. 
It's fine. It's all right. And then there's been like five different Muppets shows since then. Each one of them will get a season before deciding, eh, this doesn't work. Let's try something else. <laughs> and so we just wanted to talk about, you know what? Remember when there was those Muppet movies where they just take, hey, you know this movie or you know this story. We're going to retell it, but with the Muppets. Sometimes it's going to be entirely with Muppets. Might be just with you know, one character is human, the rest are Muppets. It can be any combination. We decided we wanted to pitch our own. We can make it funny, we can make it serious. Inevitably, it's probably going to be both. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about the, know, our love for the Muppets and our love for these other things by showing these crazy over-the-top combinations. And uh, we'll see where this takes us. I'm starting us out. I, I thought long and hard about what movie I wanted the Muppets to be in. And ultimately, I settled on uh, Citizen Kane. Not just because it's my favorite movie. I think my, uh, you know, I was kind of inspired by the Muppets Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol is such a serious story, such a, and you know, I've never seen a, an adaptation of it quite like the Muppets version, where yes, it's funny, but even in that, it's still really heavy when it needs to be. And so I thought, hey, let's take a, a serious heavy story like Citizen Kane, let it be serious when it needs to be serious. Let's, let's, you know, let's have some fun with it when, it, you know, when there's uh, crazy things going on. So I'll give you, for those of you who haven't seen Citizen Kane, including Brendan here, one of these days, <laughs> one of these days, yeah. um, we'll give you a, a brief rundown of what happens. There's this very famous wealthy man who dies alone in, you know, basically, uh, what, what's the name of the place Trump lives? Basically in Mar-a-Lago, just, it's old, it's abandoned, he lives there alone. He dies alone. His last word, Rosebud. And so the world goes into a tizzy trying to figure out what does Rosebud mean? And so we're going to have Charles Foster Kane, this old man, this wealthy, powerful man, be played by the original actor Orson Welles. We're going to have him be the one human. We're going to have the reporter who's going around. He's talking to everyone who knew him. What does Rosebud mean? That's going to be Kermit the Frog. He's going to be the straight man interacting with all these wacky characters and getting so exasperated and broken down by it that he loses control and just, oh my gosh, I can't figure out what Rosebud is. This doesn't matter. This guy was a terrible person and a hero and I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's just a stupid word. <laughs> and I have ideas for everyone else. The best friend he goes to, the guy who was there at the beginning, Jedediah Leyland, no relation, I swear, is going to be uh, Fozzie Bear, the guy who isn't all there anymore because he's a little old and hey, he just wants to, hey, the nurse is gone. Can I have a light of that cigarette? Now let me tell you this terrible joke about how Charles Foster Kane was born a poor loser. <laughs> I'm thinking for Charles Foster Kane's first love, his first wife, the niece of the president, I'm saying Emily Monroe Norton Kane is going to be Miss Piggy. <laughs> oh, they're so in love at the beginning. And over the course of a single montage of Breakfast Over the Years, we see her just become, I'm sick and tired of your crap. No, no, you listen to me, no. Come on, Charles, Charles. And just going crazy and domineering. You see how it's just like, oh my gosh, I cannot take any more of this woman. And so you see why he would be driven to have an affair with Camilla the Chicken, <laughs> an aspiring singer who wants to have this amazing career. He leaves his wife for her, puts everything into her career. And she's terrible. She can, Camilla the chicken cannot sing worth a crap and he ruins his reputation. He's running for governor and this whole thing crashes because of this affair and his new mistress and his new uh, second wife. I'm thinking for the banker that raises him, the one who's stern, trying to always teach him a lesson, it's got to be Sam the Eagle. The one who's always saying, no, Charles, you can't do that. You'll be losing a million dollars a year. This is terrible, terrible. I raised you to be American. <laughs> Sam the Eagle would be perfect. <laughs> and my last idea, the, uh, the guy who sticks with him to the end, the guy who sees there's still something good in him, the guy who says, you know, ultimately, I know you're doing bad things, but I'm a yes man anyways. I'm sticking to you. Oh, crap, that's a bad decision, but I'm here to support you. It's Scooter. It's got to be Scooter. Now, I'm not going to go into what Rosebud is, uh, but I will say, if Kermit realizes exactly what Rosebud is and tries to save Rosebud at the last minute and fails, <laughs> That would be very dark, very hilarious, and very Muppets. I would kill to see that. Especially, like, you take those serious scenes seriously, like Charles, you know, Simpson can, you know, throw in Karen as part of his bedroom as, you know, everything, his life is falling apart, sadly, slowly walking through this hall of mirrors, 
I want to see his life at the, uh, his big governor's rally falling apart while Statler and Waldorf are up there at the Ooh. balcony <laughs> laughing and, you know, making all these political jokes about how he's the, uh, the worst political, uh, you know, the worst governor since Bill Clinton. I want every joke about this imaginable, and I think the Muppets is the way to do it, <laughs> to take Citizen Kane seriously and also say this whole thing is one big joke. <laughs> I only have one question. All right. Is he going to slap Camille the chicken? <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. I didn't think of that. Because <laughs> I know he slaps his second wife. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You convinced me with that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I want it to be dark and serious, and oh my gosh, that would be funny. And then she slaps him. <laughs> They just give him a slap off. Yes, and, yes. And then they both just start ripping things off the uh -huh. lawn, pushing over furniture. <laughs> oh, that would be beautiful. Oh and there's like feathers movie. everywhere. <laughs> yes, Brendan, you do have to see this movie. It's one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> Remember the other day when we watched one of the greatest movies ever made and you liked it? <laughs> now Brendan's going to watch this and be like, Muppets. Just right. thinking about how oh, oh, the Muppets. So, what an odd film to throw the <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll just hear the chicken being hit the moment uh, you were talking about. I, I mean, yes, it's a very strange movie to do, but the Muppets yeah, are strange, yeah, and so yeah. I thought it was perfect. They can do it. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because it's, you know, many people consider it the greatest movie of all time, but you got to be able to poke fun at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't see uh, Disney making Muppet movies about, well, I guess they did a Haunted Mansion recently. Right. But they should really do that a little bit more. Yeah. Take these older movies or older stories. Right. Just redo them. You yeah, know? They, they wouldn't have the rights to, uh, to Citizen Kane. I think that is owned uh, internationally by Warner Brothers and domestically by Paramount. It, it was made by a production company that isn't around anymore. But uh, uh, yeah. they could do it with uh, Sound of Music. That's a, a movie that uh, they own now. That was 20th Century Fox. Oh, geez. That would be hilarious. Yeah. But I, I'm not going to go into uh, Sound of Music. We'd be here all day with that one, trying to figure out which one of the kids is which <laughs> Muppet. <laughs> yeah. Frankly, my dear, I don't give... <laughs> yeah, different. Gone with the Wind would be great, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, but yeah, that's, uh, that's Citizen Kane. It would be glorious. It would be terrible. I would be here for every minute of it. <laughs> okay. All right, Sounds Brendan, good. you're up next. So, uh, since we watched Godfather last week, I chose to go with the Godfather. And I think the human character should be the main dude, the son. Uh, Michael. Michael. What's his name? Michael. Michael, yes, Michael. Um, I don't have a list quite as well put out as Jed, but I think Michael would be the best human character, since there's always at least one human character in these shows, uh, these Muppet movies like Treasure Island or uh, Muppets uh, Take Manhattan or any of them. So there's, I think he would be a good fit for the human just because he's the darkest <laughs> one out of them all. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that would have to be taken seriously when things get dark. Yeah. Uh, the Godfather, um, I was either thinking Kermit or even possibly it could be both of the old men, you know, the old men that goof around. <laughs> yeah, Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, and you just give him funny accents or something. Yeah. And... <laughs> I just... Have... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I'll share mine afterwards. <laughs> well, go ahead, Robert. Go ahead, I'll shake you up. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm just imagining both of them like, you come into my wedding. No, it's our, da it's our da daughter's wedding. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. We're a gay couple. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just it's like gather the five families five of them what would, would Sonny be animal yeah the crazy oh, out of yeah. control one yeah. animals just about dawn <laughs> and then they shoot him at the end ah! <laughs> sister 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 <laughs> <That's his friend. laughs> they, they'd have to lighten some things up like the, right. the beating up of the sister they'd have to turn that into him just not liking her meals or something. Right. Wait, come on, Brendan. Who's playing? Who's playing that guy? And who's playing the sister? Uh, well, you know, we we're thinking Animal should play the crazy guy, crazy brother. Mm -hmm. And then the sister that could be 
Who would, oh, the girl in the band. Janet. Yeah. Janet. 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 Why don't you like my food? Isn't it Italian enough for you? And then, and then she greets the dude in the band with the sunglasses. Mm. Like, no, this food <laughs> sucks. I'm going to McDonald's. <laughs> is uh, is Bonacera the guy who gives the, the speech that the movie opens up on? That's got to be Sam the Eagle, right? I believe in America. <laughs> in America, I made my fortune. <laughs> yeah, you got to start out with that. And he, he's got to be super hesitant. I, to, I, yeah. I was awful. thinking that Sam was going to play uh, the lawyer. Oh, uh, what's his name? The... Tom Hagen. Yeah, Tom Hagen. Yeah. I thought he was going to play Tom Hagen. Because you imagine his look, and when he says he's out of the family, he's just like, what? What? <laughs> it's not, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stefan's face, that, that would be perfect. Just... <laughs> what? What? You were saying? <laughs> Then the kind of pushover brother, Fredo. Fredo, I think he could be. Oh heck, he might be Fozzy. Yeah, Fozzy's kind of a pushover. Yeah. he's he's uh you know he's meeting Kay for the first time. He's really awkward and trying to make a joke to crack the ice. Or in the confrontation with Mo Green, Mo Green would be funny if he was just a random human just pushing around all these muppets like. Oh, he's, oh he's, uh, he didn't mean anything when he beat me up. It was just a, a bad punchline. Ah, waka waka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the Muppets in any of these movies, like serious movies we're going to be talking about, yeah. just, it would just like, <laughs> it would just take these movies to another level. Oh, yes. It'd be hilarious. It t- it'd take them from a 10 out of 10, dial it up to 11. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. So, would K be Miss Piggy? Which one's K? K is the Second. Michael's girlfriend, his wife at the end. Oh, okay. I'm thinking you'd have to radically change the character and just have her always be the, oh, I'm sweet Miss Piggy all the time until the very end. I'm sick and tired of your crap and just like, you know, the door's closing, rips the door open, goes out. Ah! Okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. The whole, <laughs> the whole time, like right in the closing scene, you guys were telling me about, she's like, Wait, did he just say the Godfather? You did <laughs> what? <laughs> you liar! When the, door, a criminal? when the door closes, you just hear a screaming and <laughs> Could you send Michael a letter for me? What do you mean you can't send it to him? You're the freaking mom! You know, if you know, I do think Michael is a good choice to have a human character. <laughs> But if he were to be a Muppet, if you were to do Walter from the Muppets movie and have him start off as the normal guy who goes super evil and dark by the end, I would love the crap out of that. Walter? Yeah. And he turns into, by the end, since he's become so evil, he turns into a human, like yes, a yes. Muppet or a man. Does he turn into Jason Siegel? Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's what it's going for. <laughs> oh, that would be Very perfect. Right. Oh, Mama Maria, you turned into a human. Uh, let me think who else is there in the main story. There's the chick, his first wife, uh, Apollonia. She could be, we can make up a new Muppet. Oh, no, yeah, there's not a whole lot of uh, female Muppets. Female Muppets are you could do Camilla because you can't understand her. That's true. <laughs> Where's Kermit at all? We have to have Kermit. Yes, Kermit could be the like the, the ginger dude. Oh, the, no, the blonde dude, my bad. Tom Hagen, the lawyer. Yeah. That could be funny. It's like, oh, oh, what, what do you mean I'm being cut out? <laughs> oh, what do you mean I'm being cut out? Because, <laughs> yeah, Tom Hagen is in many ways the uh, the dramatic straight man. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on The Godfather. Um, I would think it would make it better. Would the violence be as graphic, but with stuffing instead of blood? I would make it that way, yeah. <laughs> this sounds like a robot chicken godfather. Just got to throw that out there. It does. <laughs> Statler and Waldorf. Oh! <laughs> the godfathers. We would just have to it. <laughs> and yes. only, only the one without the mustache gets hit and the other one. <laughs> 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 and they have to bury him. Yeah. And then he talks to the one with the mustache for the rest of the film. Yes, Just yes. To, that way you can kill off one and then keep the other. Mm. Yeah, the and he, yeah and that's like <laughs> that's him being crippled because yeah. he lost his best friend or whatever. Uh-huh. 
That'd be dark. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out. What if they were they were brothers, and so that's why they're called the Godfathers. And so during the wedding time, they're just like, "I thought it was my daughter. No, it's my daughter." <laughs> oh, who knows? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah. It could be the Hog Father if it's Miss Piggy. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> the Hog Father. <laughs> Have you come to visit me on my wedding day? Was wedding day? It, that would make the sleep with the fishes seem so much funnier. <laughs> sleep with the fishes. We <laughs> fucking picked the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff was perfect. Hold on, hold on. Can we have a uh, freaking Pepe and uh, Rizzo be his bodyguards down in uh, uh, Italy? Italy is that where he's at? Italy, yeah. I like it. And they're just goofing off the whole time. And that's why that's why the car bombing happens. They're, the <laughs> they're like looking at the bomb. They're looking at the bomb like, do you think there's blocks here? I don't know. I thought you put it here. <laughs> well, well, get out of here, okay? <laughs> ben, honeydew, honeydew and Beaker are like, Oh, and uh, for my experiment today, I'm going to I'm going to blow, <laughs> I'm oh, going to blow up that building. And Rizzo? Did you put the charges in the right place, Gonzo? Oh, yeah, of course I did. Then, <laughs> Gonzo, <laughs> first wife. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> and they're like interrogating them and beating them. No, I, I have no idea they put the charges. This isn't a game hit, I swear. <laughs> Ralph the dog is like trying to teach her how to drive right at that moment. He's like, Yeah, so oh, you just got to plug this in right here and start it up, and uh, everything will work. <laughs> They put Beaker on the stretch track or whatever. <laughs> this is so dark and dramatic. I, I feel we have no alternative but to go to the most dark and the most graphic of all of them. Stefan, so what do you have for us? It's you know, perfect. You know, Tell us. As I as I was as I was sitting here, I was like, I'm gonna change at first I was like Rowan Atkinson is John Wick. But then I decided to change it. Uh, and it's John Wick, by the way. But I wanted to change it slightly so that it parodies both John Wick and Breaking Bad. So it, it, it will be called Juan Wick. And it will be Danny Trejo as Juan Wick, where he's a dad and he's, he, you know, his, like Walter is his son with crutches and Miss Piggy's his overbearing wife. <laughs> and then finally Rizzo the Rat comes along and kills his dog. So he goes after Rizzo the Rat and it turns out he's secretly Juan Wick, this guy. And they go after the, <laughs> he goes after Rizzo the rat and Ralph the dog is Rizzo's dad. And he's like this, <laughs> this cartel guy resembling the Russian in uh, John Wick. Mm. And we just go from there with Danny Trejo interrogating and killing so many people. Like Sweden, so you'd be like speaking to him in Spanish, like, hola, como esta? And just talks, asking him. And, and he's like, he, and he says in Spanish, oh, I lost 30 kilos or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, si, see, si, that's a lot. Bien, bien. Are you here on business, Mr. Wick? I'm afraid so, Francis. And it's just play out the same scene. Uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> and so basically, I just wanted the family element of uh, Breaking Bad and the setting in New Mexico, but then have the plot play out like John Wick, where he runs around murdering Muppets. All these Muppets. <laughs> and, but his wife is like upset with him and his sons. Dad, don't do it. No. <laughs> I have to say, I mean, I could say, you know, Walter as Walter is perfect. <sighs> but he's Walter but, Jr. But yeah, <laughs> Walter as Walter Jr. Yeah. But honestly, I could not think of a better recasting than Miss Piggy as Skylar. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She's the overbearing wife who... <laughs> It's not until too late you realize she was right the whole time. That's yeah. Miss Piggy to a T. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and just arguing that we did. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> did you remember to get the groceries or whatever it is? <laughs> that's the card we don't use. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have a gun and you haven't used it yet? <laughs> the dog's dead, you idiot. <laughs> 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 okay, who who is the uh, who is the uh, the manager of the Overlook Hotel or the I Continental? Was, you know, originally I was thinking uh, Sam Eagle mm -hmm. as Winston. But mm. I was like, there's got to be someone better than 
You know, Sam Eagle might work as uh, Karen, the guy at the front desk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will that be all for you? Oh, yeah. Will that be all, Mr. Wick? We're, we apologize for any <laughs> inconveniences, so on and so forth. Now I have Winston. I have the perfect idea, not for Winston. Yeah. But for Common's character in John Wick 2, the bodyguard who, after John Wick kills the person he's yeah. guarding, is after him the whole time, it's got to be Animal. Yeah. <laughs> animal chasing him down like, Moscow John Wick! <laughs> Just going after him all through the streets of Italy, falls him home to New York, in this shootout on the subway and stabbing each other on the subway. <laughs> 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 he's like, he, he's, they roll down the stairs. Yeah. He's like, ah, ah. Uh, and then animal like bites him. Oh, <laughs> he's like waiting for this muffin. Uh, uh, <laughs> professional courtesy. Yeah, the problem with you, you wouldn't be able to make this uh, John Wick 2 because all the Muppets would be dead by then. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people die in John Wick 1. Not going to be enough for no, John Wick like, 2. Let's say that all the, all the minions are just the Fraggle Rock. Yeah. Then he just go around. Yeah, killing the Fraggle Rock. Is, yeah, the, the, is the club rock. going to be called the Fraggle Rock? Yeah, it should be. <laughs> the Fraggle Rock. I'm Danny Trejo. I say you bring <laughs> William Defoe back to play himself in that character in that movie. Yeah, and the yeah. Muppets beat him up. <laughs> like you got Ralph the Mouth <laughs> with brass knuckles just wailing on <laughs> And he was like, ow! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> USOB, what did they do to my son? <laughs> By the way, that's a compliment where I come from. <laughs> and the great irony is he's playing the dad to a rat who kills a dog. Mm. He himself is a dog. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> or Ralph could play both roles. He plays the dog as well. He's like, oh, they got me, Juan. You're not, you're not going to let me die in vain, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. Danny Trey. It's just like, it shows him in the sa- shower scene. He has like, Miss Piggy tattoo and <laughs> Spanish and Latin all over his back. <laughs> so what what is uh, pig in Spanish? Pig. Oh, I don't know. Brendan knows this. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Brendan doesn't know wait, this. Wait, Chancho. 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 Señorita Chancho. Señorita Chancha. Buena. was beautiful. Chanchita. <laughs> Chanchita. Bueno. Bonita. Bonita chachita. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty little Miss Piggy. <laughs> Pretty little Miss Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then the ending can, can maybe the ending can resemble nobody where Miss Piggy joins, <laughs> and so does you know Walter Jr. We'll just right. call him Walter Jr. for sure. no reason yeah. because he's Walter, and because he's a son, not because his dad's name is Walter. Right. His name's Juan. So they, at the end they just <laughs> they just kill like Ralph the dog and all this convincing honeybee and all yes. this Beaker. Oh, oh they, <laughs> they they kill Beaker with the pencil or whatever. With a freaking pencil. <laughs> He's like running around with a pencil in his eye. <laughs> Again, looking too far forward because there's no way they would all survive to this point. But John Wick 3. The crazy assassin guy who's the John Wick fanboy. Yeah. The guy has to be the Wilkins coffee mascot. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, before Jim Henson made the Muppets, he did advertising for a coffee company called Wilkins Coffee. And he made these short, like 10 <laughs> second commercials using, you know, puppets, what would later be called Muppets. And there was this one that he would always use that was incredibly dark and violent and threatening. Like one where it's like, Inviting someone, hey, you want to try Wilkins coffee? No. And all of a sudden, you just hard cut to this guy clinging, stuffing off a sword. You know, some people just never learn. <laughs> <laughs> you could have that gag in there. Yeah. Why well, are you going to come in? Uh, you going to come in? No. <laughs> some people never learn. And he like, just <laughs> slides his hand and is getting back up and he's like bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> they need to bring that Muppet back. Is that just Kermit? It's just like a he's a he's a different color he's he's gray yeah, he's a kind of a prototype yeah i don't know if he has a an official name he's not an official muppet no <laughs> but it'd be great to have him back i would be wonderful <laughs> oh winston could be cookie monster just for no reason like yeah it, for no reason because they don't have the rights to the sesame street but they should just have <laughs> Oh, we're come have cookie, you know. We're no business on company grounds. <laughs> no business 
like, cookie is the <laughs> And they're like, <laughs> and the job is serious, like, you, you gotta turn it on like that. Like, no, me no do. And she like puts a cookie on his desk. Oh. And then another cookie. Oh, bag of cookies. Spilled. Oh, so many cookies. Okay, okay. I give up one. One is yours. Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. Who's gonna be the, the, the I don't know who the guy's name is. Hmm. He's like his friend and he's a black guy and he gets killed by this, the lady. Oh, yeah. I was... He could be a uh, Fozzie or something. Which yeah. movie is this? The first one. Oh yeah, the uh, Harry. And and hey, maybe, Harry. <laughs> then could have Miss Poogie from the Muppets. Yeah. Stuff. She plays the assassin lady, and she has to like break her thumb. Oh, <laughs> that. Oh, it hurts just thinking about that. Scene. She she just <laughs> takes the stuffing out of that. Just <laughs> 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 what? One kills Fozzie Bear. All, all our our choices wow. are getting progressively <laughs> more graphic. <laughs> <laughs> We I just mean, want to see these puppets tear each other apart. Right? Yeah, all, all I'm hearing is we secretly hate the Muppets and want to watch them violently die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, going to that. I mean, Psycho would be great, too. Ooh. <laughs> it's like the mystery element. Yeah. 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 Oh, that, that would be a great one. <laughs> Dresses up as Miss Piggy and kills people <laughs> in the shower. Yes. So. You know, I would buy Kermit doing that. Kermit's just meek enough and when he breaks, I, I would buy that. He, he has like one of those big noses on yeah. him and a wig. He's like stabbing Janet to death uh-huh. in the shower. <laughs> and the stuffing like clogs the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go down. <laughs> oh, that would be beautiful. But And it closes up on Janet's eyes and they're already shutting. Like, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that really hurt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have anything else we want to add about Juan Wick in the world of the Muppets? <laughs> yes. No. Oh, what do we got, Robert? Bobo. You know, the big bear guy? Yeah. He's Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, yo, oh, 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 my. Oh, oh, uh, you're working again? <laughs> I've been thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. The, noise complaint? Oh, uh, yeah. There. Oh, 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 that's a lot. That's a lot of blood. Want a working again? Marshmallow sandwich? Like, yeah, why not? Does it have jalapenos? Yeah. Oh, oh Pepe. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking, did you already do Pepe? Did... We've, we've never used Pepe yet. Dude, now I have... Pepe can be yeah. the cleaning crew. Yeah, he's like, yes. hey, I got the... I'm going to go clean it. Yeah, I'm going to clean it up for Perfect. You. I thought he'd be like an assassin with four knives. <laughs> <laughs> Or it could be the yeah. buddy of uh, buddy of the guys who killed a uh, Juan Wick's dog. Oh yeah, yeah. he's with Rizzo, the, like... the guy who works on the cars. Uh, what is the actor's name? He was Bruno in Encanto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't talk about him. Yeah, we, uh, I'm blanking on his name. I can't remember it. But yeah, the the, the... John Leguizamo. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, he he would be a great John Leguizamo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, Rizzo, man, where'd you get this car? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, know. Do you know whose car this is? He slaps him. Oh, what? I slap you. Slap you like a bad <laughs> donkey, okay? okay? All right, Robert, we've built this all up to you. We've put all this horrific puppet violence, all the <laughs> stuffing and gore one could ever dream for. We've built this all up to you. Yes. So what have you got for us? Dude, I feel like I should have gone more dark. Mine's Harry <laughs> Potter, man. Harry Potter. <laughs> it's the Muppets right, was, and Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the wondrous world of Muppets. Okay, so I'm thinking... I was just trying to come up with like the different characters and stuff. And just some mm-hmm. stupid moments. But uh, I, uh, we were talking about... Was it Walter, right? Is that... Yeah, Walter. Walter, Walter would be Harry. And then... As a side note, I was like... Pepe and Rizzo would be Fred and George, just cause. Why yeah, not? like yeah. they'll say they're identical when they're not, and everyone knows it. Just give Rizzo some like a red. Have people hair, always honestly. confusing which one is which? <laughs> yeah, like, hey Rizzo, I'm not Rizzo. <laughs> I'm Pepe. <laughs> oh, sorry, Pepe. They they, they all gotta have red. Who, whoever you choose for the Weasleys, they they gotta have a little patch of red hair. And they all have to be full haircuts. Yeah. 
<laughs> like original just has a little little lump thankfully pepe's already kind of got the red hair look yeah true yeah um and then i was thinking uh hold on i'm looking at the list again oh it's funny because the reason why i mentioned bobo for the other one because i was like hey he might be a good hagrid yeah <laughs> yeah him or sweetums i'm yeah. oh, sorry i mm-hmm. muted myself before everyone can hear me it's either him or sweetums and I decided on Bobo as being Hagrid because Sweetums could be his brother. Yeah, it could be Grok, or it could be the cave troll we knock out. Mm-hmm. That would be funny. Because he's not like oh, actually yeah. trying to hurt her or anything. He's just like, are you okay? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you're all alone in the girls' bathroom. Hey, I, I had to go into Hogwarts to tell them that Voldemort's back, guys. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say, I had this funniest vision you know who should play mr weasley it should be beaker because of the scene where the snake from the point of view is attacking mr weasley <laughs> it's like beaker you know Stephen, that's perfect because can you imagine him trying to like mess with muggle items without knowing how it works <laughs> <laughs> mrs weasley pops in <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> And I, uh, I was trying to think who I wanted as Snape because I don't know why he was a character that I'm like, I really want to see if I can come up with someone. Sam the Eagle was my first thought, but I'm thinking it should be changed to like someone else. And Crazy Harry looks like Snape as a Muppet. My, my first thought was actually to have Snape be the one human. He's yeah. the only one who would Snape. <laughs> freaking like, Alan Rickman. Or, yeah. Or Adam Driver or something. That would be funny. Yes. And he has to do the English accent, Mr. Potter, and he's like talking to Walter, and he's like, he's a freaking puppet, and he's, he's the only one who's playing it straight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I like that idea better. Who would Kermit be? Kermit? He'd be like... Uh, Can we give him a big beard and have him be Dumbledore? I was thinking of uh, Sirius Black. That's better. Oh, I, I like that idea, and it'd be really yeah. funny to watch him die. Yeah. <laughs> he falls through the thing. Yay! <laughs> he's, he's just like, yeah. oh, come on, Bella. You could hit better than that. Oh! Oh, yes. Oh. Well, then. He has the, the Muppet Treasure Island, this piggy tattoo on his uh-huh. chest instead of whatever tattoos he's got in the movie. <laughs> Can you imagine what it'd be like as his Annie Marges? He just turns into an actual frog. Yeah, he's a real frog. <laughs> he's useless against the devil. <laughs> Right. You, he's like he jumps around and then instead of like grabbing uh ron by the ankle like biting him he like uses uh, his tongue and wraps it around and tries to drag him underneath ooh. the willow tree yeah. or, so, <laughs> robert you were suggesting possibly having snape be sam the eagle what if instead sam the eagle is dumbledore hear me <laughs> that, out that would be Harry, there is nothing more powerful than love, love. America. Love for America. <laughs> we British don't know how things work. America does. <laughs> so, so who would Voldemort be? That's what I'm wondering. Ooh. Swedish chef. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, Swedish chef has to be one of the people from Durmstrang. Yeah, he plays Victor Crumb. Yeah. <laughs> see, you know, see, for me, my mind was like Swedish chef would be, I don't know, Hufflepuff's ghost or something. Ah, I think you should. Oh, we can't use Sesame Street, but if you can use Sesame Street, I say we do. Why not? Use the Dracula guy. Yeah, just <laughs> keep him in the Dracula outfit. And he's playing uh, Voldemort. Do we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be good. Miss Piggy? I... Piggy is Umbridge. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! That that would be terrible. I almost want to make Kermit, uh, Mr. Weasley, Miss Piggy, Mrs. Weasley. That could be fun. Yeah, just because she seems like the most, like she's a plum. How dare you steal that car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay away from my children, you. <laughs> and just thinking of how she worked in a, a Christmas Carol. Yeah. Like she was the fun loving mother, but she's uh-huh. also stern and all that. Wait, that, no. Yeah. Guys, hear me out. Miss Piggy is Bellatrix, and then Kermit is oh. serious. <laughs> yeah, she oh. could be a multiple. She's, yeah. She'd be all of them because think about every it. single character is Miss Piggy. No, no, no. In, <laughs> in, in uh, Wizard of Oz, they had her play the good witch and the evil witch. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that is true. I just want to hear her say, I've had a good ever. 
<laughs> but instead of that, she just says, and then just shoots a green light. Do we have anyone self-centered enough to be a good author? Lord Voldemort. What was that? Do we have anyone narcissist narciss it's all centered enough Pepe. to be a good Gilderoy Lockhart. I said Pepe. Yeah, hey, look at me. <laughs> look at all these things I did. Look at all of my books. Hey, my yes. books. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, if, what if that was Sam Eagle? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of, you know, for Voldemort, I'm thinking the uh, the key is whoever can do the best. Except like as ridiculous as possible. And I think Gonzo might be a good pick for that. Because instead of no nose, it's just the world's most ridiculous nose. We can still have people like, oh my gosh, the horror, your nose. Like it's what? It, is is it too small? <laughs> it's like you're what? Is it too small? Gonzo the Mort. <laughs> I've gone farther further than any Muppet to become immortal. I don't know why I did Miss Piggy. I can't do Gonzo. It's the part where he's sucking unicorn with blood with the cloak on, you can like see his nose. And they're like, <laughs> who, who could was it be? It? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who was he has like unicorn blood dripping from his nose. That's yeah, oh. what I was thinking. It's like dripping, you see the silhouette. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, please, okay, we got to make a, a Professor Quirrell. He's got to be an actual human, but when he pulls it off, you just see Godzilla's face on his back. Look at me, Harry. Look what I've become. <laughs> well, even when he's wearing the, the thing, the turban, turban, there's still the nose sticking like out. A nose sticking out at the end. <laughs> it like randomly walking. moves sometimes. <laughs> as he's walking away, it sneezes. And they're like, bless you. <laughs> And then I was thinking uh, Animal would be Peeves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no argument for me there. Or or Animal. Uh, not Animal. Or Peeves could also be just to the two old men just heckling. <laughs> yeah. That, that would be great, too. Yeah. See, I was thinking that they would just be random ministry officials and just making comments about everything. One of them is Cornelius Fudge and the other is Scrimmager. Or, or they could be Lee Jordan. Yeah. They'd like... Talk over the game. Oh, looks like that. And, and we'll have them reappear when uh, Rizzo and Pepe put their names in the goblet of fire and they turn old. They just turn into them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luna, Luna would have to be the chick in the band. Jen. She fits the bill pretty well. I was thinking she was going to be Mrs. Weasley, but I was like, no, she's too chill about everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Miss Piggy really works for a lot of these characters. She could be mm -hmm. Bellatrix or Mrs. Weasley or or Draco Malfoy. Hear me out. What? My father won't hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do have a. Oh Piggy's look, it's Mr. Potter up walking in Hollywood. <laughs> I think there's more Harry Potter characters than Muppets. That's rare for one of these things we're talking about. And yeah. There's a lot of major Harry Potter. Characters. Yeah, we can't discover. Right. That's without getting into Fantastic Beasts or half the sequels. Oh, or... no. Oh, man. We haven't. I just realized I was muted that whole time. Oops. Uh, sorry, everybody. No, no, but I was muted for the stream. Uh, what about not Cedric, not Swedish chef for Cedric Diggory? Swedish chef for Cedric Diggory's dad. <laughs> he's like tossing, he's like tossing his hands out and he's like throwing guts everywhere. <laughs> oh my son! <laughs> and he's like starts salting and peppering. <laughs> It's a, it's a spoon. It's yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ralph the Wolf is great. Uh, uh, Ramus Lupin. <laughs> yes. And he's like wearing a glasses with a nose thing. And he's like, I'm Ramus Lupin. Hi, everybody. When he tries to wear a wolf, he's like, well, that's a full moon. Pulls off his eyeglasses. <laughs> yeah. <It's> perfect. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. <laughs> well, he could also be serious. So who, who was serious? We said Kermit might be serious. Yeah. Heck, yeah, there's just not enough Muppets. Yeah. Um, what's the name of the couple that's on the show that always tries to have a musical number? It's like Wanda and something else. 
you're, you're stretching the boundaries of my knowledge of the Muppets. Are you going to the OG Muppet show? Yeah, the OG Muppet show. We should put you're not talking room. about Dr. Teeth and Electric Mayhem, right? No, no, like, like it's... I think they should be Ron and Hermione just so mm-hmm. I can think of any other female Muppets. Constantly being pushed to the side for the attention of Brother Perry. Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> these two. It's Wayne and Wanda. Wayne and Wanda. Oh. Just make Wayne a redhead. Yeah. And flesh Wayne out and, the character. You said Wayne and Wanda? Wayne and Wanda. They're on the original Muppet show. The one from the 70s. Oh boy, that, wow, we're going back in time. <laughs> All right, Wayne, Wayne, Wanda, where where are you at? They, they make out in the movie <laughs> after the lights go out. And they turn out. That's right. <laughs> you know something we can do to pad out Harry Potter's something Muppets has always been known for weird celebrity cameos. Oh yes. So we could have like a. Draco Malfoy being played by Justin Bieber and just have him get the crap beaten out of him always. <laughs> it's like, wait till my father hears about this. They have the scene from the book where Harry smashes him in the face with the snake. Oh, <laughs> bring up on Justin Bieber. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bring in, when Mad Eye Moody turns him into a, a uh, ferret instead, turns him into like one of the CD albums. Yeah. Or, hear me out, turns him into a Muppet and it throws him around. <laughs> Who's going to play Professor McGonagall? It's Piggy. Do we just bring in Dame Judi Dench, but do like an over-the-top version of like her character from uh, Downton Abbey? Uh, yeah. She's always upset and harsh with everyone. Yeah, <laughs> always angry. I, yeah, and Kirk. We'll give an Oscar for her and for her googly eye that goes off in the other direction and she's all right here's what we're going to do (laughs) 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 yeah her pug side yes who's who's mad at moody now that somebody brought him up dr teeth dr teeth (laughs) he's just walking around with it or just like random ice cube Oh, Ice Cube as as Mad Eye Moody. Which is Ice Cube? He's a uh, oh, Ice the like the, the human person. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> talk about Muppet. No, Cube. just like random celebrity cameo that doesn't belong but fits perfectly. <laughs> Ice Cube just <laughs> mocks it. I'm mad as crap. We're learning about unforgivable spells. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, constant vigilance, mother. Hey, 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 we don't do that. Here. We don't do that. Okay. But we don't do that either. <laughs> All right, we're rambling, but it's a, it's rambling with a purpose. Does anyone else have any uh, anything they want to add about the the glories, the wonders of Harry Potter with the Muppets or the Muppets in general? I think uh, Will Smith should play as Hermione, and he slaps around Ron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my magic out of your freaking mouth. <laughs> Where she slaps uh, Draco in the third movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Will Smith or uh, Chris Rock is going to be Draco. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Hagrid's bird out of your mouth. <laughs> Hagrid's bird out of your freaking mouth. It's perfect. We could not do better if we tried. And it's Wingardium us. Leviosa. <laughs> not Leviosa. He, he just yells at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he starts singing Prince of Bel Air, but like Harry Potter stuff about Welcome to Hogwarts. Yeah. I once was a muggle who born in the streets. Oh man, I, we could talk about this all day. It'd probably be incoherent rambling and just us laughing half the time. But you know, that's part of the fun with the Muppets. It's just that uh, that crazy, chaotic, uh, barely contained energy that you know uh, I hope gets taken in a, a strong, decisive new direction. But uh, honestly, just looking at the, the history of the Muppets, not a whole lot of strong, decisive uh, anything. You know, the, the show almost canceled a thousand times. Movies that everyone loved, but no one went to see. So, uh, honestly, I think this is uh, about par for the course. Sad about it, but uh, I know they'll always be around. They'll always be here for us when we need them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to cry over it. I love the Muppets. Uh, one more thing with the Harry Potter thing, though. Yeah. So, if, if we do get Will to play uh, <laughs> Hermione, Hermione, when, whenever anyone brings up apparition for the thousandth time in, in, uh, in the in the grounds of Hogwarts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to do that, just so you know, you're, you can't apparate within the grounds of Hogwarts. And Will Smith just 
Keep apparition out <laughs> your effing <laughs> mouth. <laughs> It, no, it, it, it was great. It was a great capper to this conversation. All right. Robert, I always forget the, all the different things. Robert, where can we be found? We can be found everywhere, all around. We, no, are, uh, all we, are, we are watching. You can find us, obviously, here on YouTube, live Saturdays at 7 o'clock. Tell your friends. You can also find us on Twitter, at of Cinematics. And... We don't have Aaron here, so I'll just say go check out Pretzels on uh, Webtoons and his other series that's coming out soon. I can't remember what the name of it is. Do you guys know what it is? Toonla. That's it. Toonla. Toonla. Okay. So go check those out on Webtoons. And also, if you want to listen to audio specifically, you can go to anchor.fm and you can find us on there as well. And if you want to subscribe to us, Either subscribe to this channel, or if you want to support us even more, you can subscribe for four ninety nine a month on Anchor. And that's about everything that I can think of. This uh, this this podcast is sponsored by nobody. So <laughs> if you can find anybody, let yes, us know. We, we will become shills of the uh, you know, the the least shame for anyone. Please. <laughs> C four, like, I'm talking to I, you. What wet wipes or what terrorist <laughs> organizations or whatever I have to endorse, I will do it. <laughs> Corn on the cob. <laughs> okay, maybe not everyone. I'm not shilling for the Red Cross. I have to draw a line somewhere. <laughs> yeah, screw those guys. <laughs> All right. Can we get sponsored Unless... by like a fast food restaurant, please? <laughs> oh, yes. It's like yeah, a, so we can tell the truth. You know, give us a, like, hey, we'll, uh, we'll do it for a, a free Frosty. Come on, Wendy's. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Every YouTuber does it. Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Raid like a, you know, I was half expecting that, you know, on a side note, in Batman, when it turns out Riddler has like 500 people who follow him. Like, hey guys, just wanted to thanks for all the support. Anyways, back to our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> you know, that, I just got the new us. Batman character. And we're gonna he can tell. To, we're going to plot to flood a city and all thanks to Raid Shadow Legends, where you can try our new hero. <laughs> no, we're not going to gonna go for that whole thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are aligned somewhere, Robert. We have standards, dang it. I don't. <laughs> Robert, don't. All right. Well, with that being the case, we'll uh, we'll we'll show ourselves out to anyone, and we'll leave that as our final note. See you next time, everyone. Uh, good night.